evening uh, to Zambia Block Talk Radio. My name is uh, Roger Charlie here in um, Okotox. Uh, Dr. Kasoso, welcome. Uh, Nathan, welcome. Um, see, Nathan, if you can do a three-way back into, uh, into the radio, uh, that will probably uh, be uh, helpful. Um, for full record, uh, I said council, I come from Northwestern province and mm -hmm. um, the sentiments back there, when people say, oh, there's no, no one here who can be in government, who can be loyal. But guess what? A lot of our minerals are on the table. Uh, so you tell the people there, they say, oh, we, we are not interested in you being on the table. We are just, uh, that's your resources. That, those are the sentiments uh, in the, who are the forces? Uh, in that video, um, if you heard what that man said, he, he, he says it's the cheap politicians, uh, those who, who have very little understanding uh, of, uh, of issues. Um, Africa-wise, who are the forces uh, responsible for this practice, States Council? Yeah, I, th I think what is helpful is to uh, identify the problem. I agree. Identify the problem. The problem is that there is a vast majority, uh, vast number of people who are feeling excluded right now. And the sentiment is that the exclusion is deliberate and that it's being used for political purposes. And our job, the job of people like me who have been privileged mm -hmm. to serve the government, the people of Zambia have given me the opportunity to serve them. You know, the, the, this, this state, Zambia, has educated me at great cost in years mm. past when education was accessible. And uh, I have a duty to help. I, it's more beneficial for me to keep quiet and uh, have yes. uh, a bit of money in my back pocket. But uh, what does it do to my conscience? So those of us who have uh, the, the, um, the privilege of being able to articulate issues on behalf of others, we are highlighting this thing. And I think what we must not do is, I think it may not be helpful at this point if we want to resolve the problem, to point at uh, okay. who are the, the people, but we know that responsibility lies on the government. The government has a responsibility to be in the forefront of fostering uh, uh, national unity and national cohesion. And I think the government is already aware of its responsibility because whenever we watch ZNBC TV, there is this uh, reintroduction of this slogan, one Zambia, one nation before the mm. now, now we should not only sloganeer, we should put what we are saying into action yes. and uh, give, give uh, action to those words. And uh, part of it is making sure that the appointments reflect a national character. Yes. It is not true that in Northwestern province you cannot find Northwesterners who can't save in government. It's just not true. You know, it's not true that there is no single Northwesterner who can be loyal to His Excellency, the President, or who can do work in the government in a, in a, in a loyal way and uphold the Constitution. That is the truth for Southern province, it's true for Western province, and it's true for Central province, and any other province that uh, insecure people may have a problem with the uh, appointments from. So I think it's just insecurity. And uh, I, I think this insecurity of thinking that if a person has a name that is from a particular province, mm. all of a sudden they'll start leaking information to the opposition <laughs> or other people, it's, it's just not true. You know? so, continue so on that. Uh, uh, hand, so hopefully, we can resolve it. Yeah, continue on that trajectory uh, just a little bit. Uh, when they say they may not be royal, do they understand the bigger problem they are creating? Uh, because it's like they are trying to solve a small political problem, but they are forgetting that that comes at a greater, greater cost uh, if they, we continue at, at this. Uh, rate we are going. You know, when you are concerned about leakages in government, mm -hmm. I mean, leakages always happen. They happened even at the time. If they are wrong, they shouldn't happen. But they happened even at the time we are in government. The, yes. only cure, the only cure is do the right thing. 
Obviously, like if you are it. talking about national security, uh, uh, it's a different issue. But when you are talking about leakages, about corruption or these other wrongdoings, I mean, at the end of the day, the greatest cure to such kind of leakages is just not to engage in corruption. Mm -hmm. So loyalty is to the republic. Loyalty is to the state. And uh, I don't think there is any uh, serious argument that people from these areas cannot be loyal. No one can argue that seriously, in my view. All right. Before I go to the, um, the next one, it is where you are making a very strong argument on tribal, tribal balancing. Uh, you're making a very, very uh, strong argument there. Uh, Dr. Casonso, good morning. Uh, good morning, sir. How are you today? Say hello to State Council uh, Musa Mwenye. Uh, State Council Mwenye, welcome to the blog. And it's a pleasure to uh, appropriate your wisdom and uh, uh, understand your, I perfectly understand your concerns. And um, uh, we would like to, uh, to, to just find where your, your heart sits on, uh, on the national interest in your estimation and what is going on on the ground. Yeah, so you know, um, welcome again, and, and thank yeah. you for. Do you have, do you have uh, a thank question? You uh, I'll let you have a question for him uh, before yeah. I continue. Uh, uh, State Council, in your estimation, um, in your estimation, uh, let us assume that um, uh, there is nobility in the notion of appointing only people from a particular region of Zambia. Um, what message do you think they are trying to communicate to the other half uh, that they think would serve the national interest? I, 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 I wouldn't even uh, <laughs> uh, ascribe any sort of wisdom or method, um, strategy to, to, to it. I don't think... Uh, there is any calculated strategy to send a message and there certainly can never be any nobility in excluding any part of this country from the affairs of the nation. I think it is something that has crept up and I think there has been a conspiracy of silence on, on all of our parts. We've just kept quiet and people have been complaining silently and I think now it's our job to alert our leaders that this is not okay and that this is something that ought not to be continued. Uh, if there is a message that is being sent, it's certainly not a good one. To send a message to any part of this country that they are uh, excluded from the management of the affairs of the nation is to make a very, very uh, uh, bad uh, mistake because it breeds discontent, uh, discontentment it breeds dissension and it's a recipe for problems. We need Zambians to hold together. We, we, when we are paying ministers, when we are paying the PS, when we are paying the director in government, when we are funding the parastato that has a board that only comes from two areas, we don't just tax those two areas. Every region of this country contributes to the national pace of this country. We are all taxed. And when we are being taxed, there is no discussion about where a person comes from. And I think that ought to stop now. And we must balance. There is no reason why this practice should continue. I would like to imagine that maybe it was done inadvertently up to now by looking at people people went to school with and so on. But I think now that we've alerted uh, um, the authorities, now that we've uh, raised this alarm, one would hope that we will see more balanced appointments. A deliberate move to look, seek out and look for other Zambians to participate in the management. And there are so many people. I remember uh, in our time in government when we were looking for appointments, although they could have been uh, uh, complaints even then, what I noticed is uh, People would be sought out. Yourself, Dr. Kasonso, could be called from where you are and say, but can you come back here? Are you able to help with this uh, place? You, 
seek out people and that is the job of the technocrats in the government advisors to the president or even his excellency the president himself can seek out one or two people who he thinks are capable who are not from these two regions that are being uh, are, uh, are being seen as uh, occupying a privileged position at the moment well said uh, like we said uh, this is uh, a heavy lifting um, state council we, we, we really need this. Uh, we, really need, uh, we really need this. Talk about national development when half of the country, as it seems today, feels left out. And I like your previous uh, statement where you said you, you don't want to blame anyone. Uh, I, I think that was a very constructive or very helpful. Now, when we come to national development, when people are feel left out state council what effect does that does that have yeah now with, with that i think we we that issue of national development and people being disaffected i think is across the country it covers every region in this country and and mm. uh, uh, i i don't think the the northerners or the easterners exactly. can claim to have received any more development than any other person. The complaint is simply with respect to the appointers and the appointing authority. And, and this must be made clear. It should never be an issue of targeting northerners or easterners. They have done nothing wrong. The issue here is about those who are appointing, are only appointing certain people. And, and, and I think as, as Zambians, we... We, we, we have to make that extremely clear that mm. when we raise the issue of appointments and the way they are going and our constitutional provisions, it should never ever be about attacking our brothers or, or seeing them as the ones benefiting. Because when you look at national development, you cannot claim that uh, uh, Northern Province has received any more no. development than mm. other regions. Mm. It is not true that uh, Luapula has received, in fact, I was in Luapula. Luapula doesn't even have industrial grade power, you see, because uh, uh, they can't even set up manganese processing plants in Luapula right now because Luapula doesn't have industrial grade power. You know, the, uh, the same can be said of Muchinga. Muchinga, if you go to Chinsadi, the infrastructure is very uh, insufficient. That is the same for Eastern Province as well. So these regions have not necessarily gotten any more development than any other place. Mm, mm. The people in these regions have not gotten uh, any more favors, the people on the ground. What is happening is it is the elite who are appoint in the appointments are doing it in a way that is sending a very dangerous signal and that we must deal with. Now, yes. coming to the issue of development, the, the issue of development in my view, we have had a huge problem, and, and I've always said this, I'll say it again, of corruption. Mm. And that is the issue that all of us from all regions have seen. It is something that I think when it comes to issues of uh, uh, corruption, whether it's by former leaders or current leaders, it's a problem that we have to uh, to address. Our our national pace is very small. We had the FIC reporting that at one point I did an analysis of their reports. In three years, we had corrupt transactions that went up to eight hundred million dollars. This is a country whose reserves is about one point five one billion. Mm, exactly. You see. So now, if you have those kind of leakages and then you want to build, they, even at a household level, you cannot build an economy or you cannot build your household first when you haven't first fixed the leakages. You haven't looked at your expenditure level uh, on the expenditure side, stopped the excessive, wasteful, and unnecessary expenditure before you start building up your reserves. And that's our problem. How can um, our people in Northern Province, our people in Luapula, our people in uh, in Western Luapu, uh, uh, Northwestern or Southern, 
access real development when instead of buying an ambulance at $50,000, we are buying the same ambulance at $288,000. And this is one ambulance and our, our friends from Sweden embarrassed us as a country. Because after it was announced that these ambulances were bought at 288,000 by our, our government using a middleman, the Swedish government announced that they had donated the same spec of ambulance at $50,000. How can our nation develop and uh, take uh, development to these areas when we are mm -hmm. uh, buying uh, fire tenders at $1 million a piece? Okay. You know? <laughs> Yeah, and, and, you are, yeah, and you are spending 40, $42 million on fire tender. <laughs> when we know that the total amount that was spent to bring them in is $3.5 million, and you even go an extra mile and waive taxes on those procurements. You know? <clears throat> and the list goes on and on and on. And on and on. Now we are dealing with honeybee. Oh, that's it. That is like I say, it is another a can of. <laughs> that, yeah, that, that's what I meant. Uh, State Council, when I said, is everything okay? <laughs>